Well, we all know that there was a, a, a fire accident that happened in Kumasi, but there's been another in the same city. The Asafu market also uh, was enraged, and this is the second fire incident at the market in less than three days. Uh, let's bring you what happened there on Saturday. At about 9 p.m. Saturday night, many residents around Asafo saw a thick cloud of smoke emanating from the Asafo market. There was a second fire incident in the Ashanti region barely 24 hours when another fire destroyed shops at the Dr. Mesa part of the Kumasi Central Market. The affected traders have ruled out electrical fault or power as the cause of the fire. The media we went back here printing press. We start from books where we print you know paper papers. Ni ni na condemn. The affected shops include a printing press, a bookshop, hair and beauty product shop, shops that sell necklaces, and another that sells rubber. The two things we be doing to rubber and nasi for black coffee nasi for. How many many ni na she? At home. Yeah. For the shoemakers, some have lost between 1,000 and 1,200 pairs of shoes. One of us had to supply 1,200 pairs of shoes to some people in Burkina Faso. All of them are bent now. All fingers are pointing in the direction of the activities of one of the shoemakers here. So this point is the finishing point of the shoemaking um, shops here and at this point they try and finish the shoes that they manufactured in this area and we are told that the person that mounts this area used naked wires to fix the machine that is used to to do the finishing and unfortunate for him when he was using it it sparked fire and he left to get people to help him down the flame and unfortunately that couldn't be done as early as possible and it resulted in this particular blaze that had destroyed so many shops here. The gentleman in question had been warned many times to stop using the naked wires, but he always fought us. He is the one we are all looking for now. He is nowhere to be found. The Asafo post office was also destroyed by the fire. Meanwhile, NADMO, fire service, and the police have started investigations. Prince Apia reporting. And on Sunday, there was another fire outbreak. Lava Femme's Erastos Asaridonko reports that about 30 market stores in the midsection of the market uh, had gone up in flames. The raging fire consumed wares with fury. You so said the efforts of firefighters are being greatly hampered or were being greatly hampered because the area was largely inaccessible at the time. Firefighter, firefighters had to use the upper terrace of a building and the construction close to the fire scene to battle the inferno. Well, as you can see on the MajorOnline.com, all the latest update has been provided. And then also you get to indicate um, as, as and when the incident happened, what really so far had been done to make sure that the rage or the blaze was kept under some control. Now, still in the Ashanti region, uh, his 20-year reign as uh, the 16th occupant of the Golden Stool has been described as inspiring and rather successful. Several dignitaries, including the president, uh, joined Asante Man uh, to climax the 20th anniversary of Utun Fosse to the second on the Golden Stool. The Akwesidae Kese held at Menchia Palace, has seen rich and colorful display of Ashanti and Ghanaian culture. Traditional rulers from across the country who owe allegiance to the Golden Stool are in attendance. Plus, the Dagbon King, Yana Bukhari II. Now, here are some excerpts of President Ikufuado's goodwill message. For the first time in the history of our republic, Asantimoyen is privileged to welcome to Adaikese monarchs from the historic kingdoms of Dabon in the north 
and to the coastal kingdom of Anlo. They have come in all splendor, in peace and brotherhood. Yes. We feel it our bounden duty, therefore, in the presence of our noble gathering, to address a fervent appeal to His Excellency the President, our former presidents and elder statesmen, and the leadership of political parties who seek to govern our nation to let this signpost guide us to our true destiny, which is a vibrant Ghana developing in peace and harmony. Amen. So let us distill the rancor, the bitterness, and the violence out of our political discourse and allow our nation embrace a new era of peace. We have been true to the vision we set for our sentiment and our people bear witness to the impact we have made on their lives. The theme for this anniversary was chosen advisedly, deepening our cultural heritage through socio-economic development. A scientific dress of Yamautin Qua. And now, Juma, Ababaya or Memu, a fibra free schedule. Omana this year, Omana Kanko, Omana Punto, Mana Pakuya in Kabum, Omana Subjay. Kaka and Nansa Wawunyan Nayi and the Yabungura, Ebua, Emma, Ye Yi Yana Fufro, our Dagbon, and Ne Asujaba Dagbon. When you are in Yaba and the Sierra Bama Mount, a mo. Here in Accra, the parish priest of the Christ the King Church, the Reverend Father Andrew Campbell, says the visit by the National Chief Imam to the church as part of his 100th birthday celebration is indicative of the peaceful coexistence between Christians and Muslims. The Reverend Father also used the opportunity to admonish Christians to speak against corruption in the country. The National Chief Imam Sheikh Nuhu Sharubutu joined hundreds of Ghanaians at the Christ the King Church in Accra on the occasion of the commemoration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the celebration of his 100th birthday next Tuesday. Easter is largely a Christian celebration, but the man who is leader of all Muslims paid the church a visit on this day. Parish priest of Christ the King Catholic Church describes the gesture as evidence of brotherliness in a country of mixed religion. So it's a, a sign of unity, a sign of togetherness, that we're all living in harmony with one another. Uh, it was really significant, sorry, significant for us that he should pick Christ the King to come here and this for birthday blessings. Because at the end of the, uh, when he spoke, I gave him a special blessing on behalf of the whole church. So to me, it was a very significant that the chief of man could, could come here and think of us, you know, the Catholic Church on his 100th birthday. And it was very symbolic for us. It certainly was a history making for us that he should come. And we were so happy and so grateful to him for this. One thing which remains a threat to the country's development is corruption. Father Campbell finds Easter an opportunity to reiterate the need to rise above corruption. Third, last line of uh, the, ver the first verse, cherish fearless honesty. And to be honest, we need to be a witness. And that's what's missing in Ghana today. We want more witnesses in, the, in our country, people we can look to as an example. But we're tired of this corruption. We're tired of all these stories every day in the media 
people stealing, people lying, and doing all sorts of corrupt things. But we're, we're tired of it. Easter Sunday, a very significant um, day on the Christian calendar. I'm here at the Royal House Chapel International. Almost all the members are in white clothes um, signifying um, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In this Easter message to Ghanaians, the Apostle General of the Royal House Chapel International, Reverend Sam Crunchy Ankara, urged Christians to use the occasion of Easter to foster unity and also ensure peaceful coexistence. There are believers in church are not on talking terms with other believers outside the block of the church. And in our body politic in Ghana, it is more serious. Either you are NDC or you are NPP. If you are NPP, you are not for me. If you are NDC, you are not for me. And yet we are one nation, one people, sometimes from the same house, of the same tribe, and yet we cannot exude the love of God. We cannot show God's love. And yet we say we are believers. Crucify him or crown him. On this occasion, we are calling upon the president of Ghana. Once you win political election and you become president, you become a father to all. Nana, you are not a father to only a segment of Ghanaians, but a father to everyone. And if you are in the opposition, let's criticize constructively. We pray that all the girls who are lost, they will be found this Easter. We pray that accidents and bloodshed on our roads will come to an end. We pray that our police service will take the law and execute the law. Punish people who must be punished. Arrest people who must be arrested. So that there will be order and peace on our roads and our streets and in our country. The first service just ended here at the International Central Gospel um, Church. Some members we've been speaking to here um, have been telling us about the significance of Easter. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Um, the whole purpose of Easter is for us to celebrate the grace that God has showed us by sacrificing his son for us, him dying on the cross and saving us from our sins. I see today as uh, the resurrection day and so for me it's all about love of Christ. Christ died for my sake and uh, he has saved me so I have to also show the same love to the others. So, so that's it. Now it was a massive party at the A4 Sutherland Children's Park as your Superstation Joy 99.7 FM fed thousands of underprivileged individuals at this year's Easter Soup Kitchen. Now, for many of the beneficiaries, it was an opportunity to smile once again and to participate in the festive cheer. Now, apart from the food, some benefited from health screening, uh, fronted, of course, by the Sugar Project. Ifwa Evans Chinnery was there, and she has more. <laughs> They filed in Sunday morning in their thousands to do just one thing, partake in the festive cheer. The Joy FM Easter Soup Kitchen was the go-to event for them, else they are left out of the Easter celebrations. They were fed, clothed and nourished. Lots of food, drinks and some really good mix of music. <laughs> By close of day, the thousands were unanimous in their gratitude to the team for their kind gesture. <laughs> well, if you missed out, don't fret too much. We shall do this again sometime. After all, we've been doing this for 20 years. Join us then. <laughs> And it's always a period for showing love. And what a way to show love 
to those who are vulnerable and underprivileged. But that's it for the latest news headlines we have, where we'll be looking at uh, some online portals, majoronline.com possibly. We'll look at um, what's the fallout from that uh, coordinated attacks in Sri Lanka and what the death toll currently is. And then, of, of course, we'll look at, uh, we told you about uh, the one who has won the Ukrainian elections, has been predicted by a landslide, who in real life was an actor or is an actor who also portrayed a character who was a history teacher who accidentally <laughs> became a president in real life is also now going to be president of the Ukraine. What do you think about it? We're taking a break. When we come back, all these stories for you.